Hello there and welcome to Coley's Garden. Today is the 2nd of November. I just wanted to show you the beauty that I just witnessed. Oh, they're gone. We had flying geese. Wow, so beautiful. Yeah, so today we're in my backyard garden. It's a very cold, damp day here today in the northeast of Ireland. We're just coming to the end of the autumn season. As you can see, all the leaves have fallen from the ash trees. We still have some leaves over there on the sycamore tree. So I've been busy over the past couple of weeks, raking up all the ash leaves from the front yard and storing them into my compost pile way out there. So that's working out really, really well. I've been able to um, put all my natural waste in there. So hopefully by springtime, I should see an abundance of organic compost to work with. So just coming over here to the patio garden, you can see my snowball shrub plant is in full fruit. So it has these beautiful red berries, which will soon be harvested by all the beautiful birds in my backyard. So I'm just going to show you what the seeds look like. So they do look a little bit like an apple seed. I can show you now. Let's see. There we go. You can see that so they're very easy to identify okay come on focus camera focus mm. it doesn't want to focus mm. okay there we go yeah so that's what the seeds look like so I'm just going to pop them over here into my enamel pot and hopefully by springtime I should see an abundance of new snowball shrubs. So this was put in here several years ago as a cutting which I found in my local forest and it's just been growing beautifully in here. So you can see you've got lots of autumn colours going on in my backyard as well as the forest area over there we've got lots of um, silver birch trees and green beech trees growing over there. So that's putting on a beautiful display. I'll just take you over to the patio garden so you can see what's happening. So you can see we have lots of autumn colours over here. We have the nasturtium and barge, which is still flowering, surprisingly. So these may flower for another couple of weeks. And I've been able to harvest lots of barge seeds over the past couple of weeks which I'm very, very happy about. I haven't been able to harvest any nasturtium seeds just yet, but I'm really looking forward to doing that. Just coming over here, just want to show you all the wild fungi growing all over my gardens. So around this time of the year, they grow abundantly in my backyard in the most strangest places. So this is what they look like. And there's a variety of different fungi growing in my garden, so it's very delightful to see. So I do have a lot of work ahead of me in my garden. As you can see, my pathways are very lush and green. Um, if you watch my previous videos, I spoke about wanting to encourage my clover pathways, which I am doing really, really well. But of course, there's lots of um, weeding involved as well. So that's okay. That's another day's job for me, which I'm looking forward to. I do have to come out here and weed my raised garden beds, as you can see. Lots going on in there. So everything's looking beautiful. So lots of harvesting over the next couple of days for me. So since I'm over here, I'm going to show you um, how to harvest rose hips. Now is the perfect time of the year to harvest your rose hips. And it's very easy to identify your rose hips because they're bright red um, fruits like this one here. So it'll be very easy to tell when they're ready for harvesting because they're bright red and they should feel very, very squishy. 
excuse my dirty hands um, but I'm just going to show you what they look like so that's all the seeds in here so I did harvest a few of them over the past couple of days and they do taste absolutely gorgeous so they're packed with vitamin C they're full of antioxidants so you can use these in skincare tea um, oils and so much more and they're very easy to dry out you can dry them out naturally or you can dry them in an oven for several hours but i just recommend that you dry them naturally in a cool place shouldn't take too long for them to dry out so i'm just going to pop these in here as well i'm just going to go wash my hands and taste some of the beautiful rose hips Okay, so if you want to squeeze out the puree, um, if you're on the go, if you're out on your walks and you just feel like having a little healthy snack, then all you have to do is just squeeze it between your fingers and the puree should just pop straight out, like so. And then you can just eat it. It's very good for you. It's a healthy little snack on the go. I'm just going to try that now. Wow, that is delicious. It's also kind of bitter as well, bittersweet. Perfect combination. Mmm, yummy. Yeah, so I'm just going to pop this somewhere and see how we get on with this. Should come back next year, please God. Just going to pop that in here. Cover it with some fresh compost, like so. That's all there is to it. So I hope you two will try a little snack on the go, um, making sure that they're bright red and squishy. And of course, um, you can bring them home. So we'll have to transplant my broom plants. I spoke about this in my previous videos, that these just grew here accidentally. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Um, I've never been able to grow broom myself. It just grew naturally, but this time I just popped all my seeds in here accidentally and nature took care of them. So I will come out here one of the days and transplant them. I did transplant a few of them if you watch my previous videos. Um, so they put on a beautiful display in the spring and summertime, right up until the autumn time, in fact. Um, and they're an evergreen shrub, so they're a beautiful plant to have in the garden, producing beautiful yellow flowers, great for attracting pollinators, and so much more. I hope this video has inspired you to get creative in your own gardens, and I hope you too will plan for biodiversity and to bring life back into your gardens. Thanks very much for watching, and God bless.